Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today I'm going to take on a Fluger Try-On reel. It's a reel that I just purchased at a uh, local flea market. Uh, I paid under ten dollars. I want to say I paid seven or eight, but I can't remember. Uh, it's been in my to-do work pile for a little while now, and I thought I would grab this one. It's a Fluger, and uh, some folks are not familiar with Fluger or not familiar with the uh, history of the company. So as I work on this wheel, I'll tell you a little bit about that as well. This one happens to be a Fluger. Uh, it's a 4735, which means it's a 35 size reel. And the 35 size reel fits comfortably between the 30 and the 40. It's a good river reel. It's a good lake reel. Uh, it's a good inshore uh, bay and inlet reel uh, for those of us that fish on the ocean or the Atlantic seaboard. Uh, this one, uh, it's, uh, you can tell from uh, the uh, wear and tear on this one, it's been used, not abused. Uh, looks like it hasn't been worked much. There's uh, some dried um, oil in that coming out of the, uh, the bale assembly here. It's, it's dirty. Uh, it's missing a side button. All of those points uh, were made when I purchased this. I think the fellow was asking $15 for it. And I know I got it for about half of that. So I'll take this apart. I'll show you what we have inside here. I'll show you how to service the drags and uh, tell you a little bit about Fluger. So let's start with Fluger as I unwind the handle here uh, to start this. So Fluger was a company that's been around a long time. It, uh, I'm going to take the, this off next, but continue talking. Fluger was founded in the late 1880s as a fishing hook company. Uh, like many of the companies that were out there that started doing fishing reels, uh, it started as a manufacturing company with a specialty and then expanded its lines. So uh, Fluger uh, uh, started fishing hooks in the uh, early 1900s, around 1915 or so. It started making bait casting reels. I became familiar with, uh, with Fluger when I found this reel, um, or one like it. This is a Fluger Capital. It's a beautiful reel. It's probably from the 40s. It's got uh, German silver side plate. Uh, ball bearing construction on this side, uh, really well made, and I, it just caught my eye with the attention to detail that, uh, that was manufactured with this. And I've kind of been a Fluger fan. There's uh, uh, a lot of uh, Fluger got its name uh, from the president uh, or the founder, Ernest Fluger, but there's been a lot of Fluger reels throughout the years. Uh, today, the, uh, the number one line, this is a try-on, which is the entry level or lower level, sells for about $40. Uh, Fluger President is the, uh, the top of the line here. And Fluger uh, today is part of Pure Fishing, and Pure Fishing uh, has pen reels, Abu, Mitchell, Shakespeare, and, uh, and Fluger as the main uh, reels. And uh, this one probably shares a lot of parts with Shakespeare. I'm hoping it does because it's missing a side button and I have a Shakespeare uh, reel that I hope to pull one of those off of and see if it works. So I'm going to take the top end assembly off. We have to do that because this is not a half case that ends at the rotor. We have to remove the rotor to get to the gear assembly. In order to do that, you saw that I took the first retaining washer off. Now I have a metal washer that goes on top of a bearing, so this is a seven bearing reel. One of those bearings is in the spool, and this is the, uh, the bearing that belongs in the spool. And then it has a retaining, uh, it has a little star clip here, very, almost all spinning reels do. That, uh, that little star nut gets clicked on by this little assembly here to tell you that your, your reel is back spinning on, under drag uh, operation. With that, we're going to take the set screw off that holds that uh, shaft nut in place. It goes right into a parts bucket. And you'll notice I do use a parts bucket. In this case, it's the bottom of a milk uh, container. And I put all of my parts in there so that when we go to reassemble, I know where they are. I'm going to take off this nut by uh, going uh, the traditional counterclockwise. This happens to be an 11 millimeter nut. You'll notice in front of me in my tools tray, I have all kinds of wrenches. Uh, I work on a lot of different reels, and uh, there is no standard nut to that. Uh, each manufacturer varies them, so it's good to have a good complement of, uh, of nuts there. Okay, uh, the spool, uh, the, the rotor is clean, so we're, we're right there. This has an instant anti-reverse, nice uh, for the price of a $40 reel, you would expect to see that. 
uh, the top seems to be pretty clean as well. To get this case off now, you have to take the bump shield off first. So while I'm doing that, let me remind you if, you, if you don't work on reels a lot, I encourage you to take pictures. Uh, I know how these uh, reels come apart. A lot of times it was trial and error, but I can tell you initially I probably took the picture or I took a, um, uh, a schematic of the reel before I got started so that I knew where the pieces and parts go. And if I lost my way, I could go back to them as a reference point. Uh, that bump guard reveals that there's two screws that are hidden underneath in the case and two above. So uh, it's good for people who, who are more casual at this than I am to, uh, to take those pictures along the way. Uh, but uh, if you forgot to take the pictures in your middle, middle of one of these reels and you, you got lost and you said, let me see if uh, somebody on YouTube has this uh, reel broken apart so that I can go put it back together. Uh, this is a good time to uh, to see how that works, but also to tell you that most manufacturers have schematic parts diagrams for the current lines of reels, and they can generally tell you that. Again, if you didn't know this, if you left that bump guard on, took the two that were visible out, and then couldn't get the case off and started prying, you could break the case by not knowing that there's two hidden uh, case screws down below here. So a lot of times folks ask me, you know, can I use a mechanical screwdriver on this? You know, I prefer manuals, um, but then again, my hands are still uh, cooperating. Uh, if turning a screwdriver is difficult, then I would say uh, use the, uh, the mechanical for the removal of the screws. And I'll even go so far as to say for partially tightening the screws on reassembly, but don't tighten them down all the way with those uh, mechanical screwdrivers on reassembly. That's because they have a lot of torque and they can break a case like this. So I would tell you to stay away from that. So let's see what we got underneath here. We got a, uh, we got a nice reel. Uh, there's still a good amount of uh, lubrication in this one, so that's a decent thing. And we're going to go just take it apart and make sure that we lubricate the bearings. And I'll give you a closer look at this reel while we're at it. So again, it's a, uh, uh, a company that's been around. The first spinning reels that they actually did were in the 1950s. And uh, I'll show you an example of that in just a moment. So I took the holding screw out of the crosswind block. That enables me to pull the spool shaft out. Put that in the parts bucket. And then I can remove the main gear. And the main gear, I want to check to make sure all the teeth are in there. And, and that there's none bent or uh, somehow uh, you know, worn down as I look this way. And then I can see that this is the second bearing of the seven, and here's the third one in the back of the case. So this, and then the fourth one would be on the, uh, the pinion gear here. So this has the minimum that I would say, uh, somebody asked me how many bearings should a reel have, I would say it needs the three. It needs this one here, it needs the one on each side of the main gear for a total of three. So I'm going to use Real X uh, oil. I oil my bearings and I do blue grease on other moving parts. So we're going to go give each one of these a good drink. We're going to uh, take that cross wine block out and just make sure we put a little bit of blue grease on the, uh, the cross wine mechanism there. This one has some lubrication on it already so we don't need to, to put a lot there but I'm showing you how it should be done. Again, a nice uh, coating there. We'll check the back end of this as well. This small gear drives the bigger gear here to make the spool go up and down. So we want to make sure all the teeth are on that. They are. So we can, I'm going to set that to the bottom, 6 o'clock. Oops, before I do that, I want to put some blue grease up top there on the, the pinion gear as well. And I use a, a pen reels blue grease. Uh, most manufacturers uh, either make it or have it made for them under their, their label. Uh, I haven't found any difference between them. Uh, and uh, I have to just use pen because it's available by me. Okay, so we're going to put this back in now. Seat that. I'm going to put the other bearing on top of that. We're kind of reversing the process now in terms of reassembly. And then I'm going to go grab the spool shaft. I'm going to put that in and I'm going to align 
align that hole so that I can put that small set screw. And again, this is a value of a parts bucket now. That's a very small screw. And you can, uh, you can pick it out. So that's the screw. Sits in that little hole. And again, I, if you had just laid that on the table, it's very easy to knock these pieces and parts to the floor or uh, somewhere else on your workbench and you'll spend an awful lot of time looking for that. And if you can't find it, and it's happened to me, which is why I'm such an advocate of this uh, parts tray, uh, you're going to have to reorder the piece that's missing and that can delay you uh, getting this real uh, back fishing. So now I'm picking the four case screws out. So this is a nice little reel. So somebody didn't take that good of attention to it. Uh, as a result, uh, they, uh, the reel operated a little slow, so we just fixed that by lubricating it. The, uh, they lost the side nut, and then as they decided that uh, they weren't happy with the performance any longer, instead of it getting serviced, uh, they just decided to go out and buy new and uh, see if they couldn't get a couple of bucks in the used market for this. So if you happen to enjoy working on fishing reels, uh, don't shy away from, um, from flea markets uh, or garage sales or tag sales, depending on what area you are in the country, yard sales, uh, because you can find some good bargains, but most of the time they need to be cleaned up, they need to be lubed. And I would tell you, if you're just starting out on this, make sure that the reel is complete and not missing any pieces and parts. Uh, because a $40 reel like this, they might be missing a handle. Or uh, in this case, it was missing a cap screw, but I happen to have a reel here that I think the cap screw is going to work from. Then uh, if you can get away with that, uh, if it's a complete reel, it just needs some lubrication and you're mechanically inclined. Then I would say that this is a great way to uh, find some reels that can provide a, you know, some enjoyment and years of service for just the, the knowledge that you have of how to repair and how to lubricate a reel and keep it, uh, keep it working the right way. So, okay, so I've put that nut back on. Now I gotta find the set screw. And those of you that uh, watch me on a regular basis now I have a little bit of a problem with small screws and we're kind of having that problem at the moment but uh, if you bear with me we'll get this thing set up pretty quickly okay now the set screw holds the that nut from reverse turning and causing causing this to back off and having the rotor wobble so oh we got a nice reel now all right, and then we're going to go put the handle back on, which is a, now you're turning counterclockwise. So you're going in the direction that you would normally crank a reel. Yeah, that's, oh, that's a nice reel for the price paid. Okay, now back to reassembly. Again, if you, if you didn't take pictures, if you got lost along the way, uh, you could see this in a schematic. Uh, or you could, uh, uh, if you did take the pictures, you can go back to your, your cell phone or your uh, video camera and, uh, and reverse the steps to figure out how that all goes. Okay, so that's a nice one. Um, oops, let's just pull this up a little bit. That is burring, and I forgot to oil that, so let's go ahead and put the oil on that one. Again, nice drink on that. All right, then we're going to put the put our attention over at the spool side to make sure that these drag washers are clean they look clean right here okay so these are felt drag washers felt drag washers get oiled and these have plenty of oil on them so uh, you just want to make sure that they're flexible and there's nothing wrong with felt washers felt washers is one of three types of washer systems that can be used um, felt washers require oil uh, the second one uh, that's commonly found in low-end reels is a uh, kind of a Teflon or a plastic washer. And uh, then the reels that uh, made for bigger game fish are usually uh, a high performance uh, like a Carbon X or an HT100 kind of a drag system. Uh, now, if you're fishing this reel and uh, 
you're using it for catfish or something and it's tearing up your drags if you're finding that's the case and again this is a 35 size reel so you're probably not but uh, if you're uh, if you're doing that and you find that it's not working you can uh, find drags in the marketplace that uh, can uh, you know be carbon X drags or something of the same diameter that can be used in these reels. So I know a lot of people have made the conversions on them. The Pen Fierce has a uh, has a felt washer system. Shimano's have a felt washer system. But the Fierce sometimes, you know, you're getting a bluefish or something here on the East Coast. And uh, folks tend to uh, uh, tear those felt uh, washers up. So they make the switch over to the Carbon X or the HT100s. Okay, this is the way it went. Uh, again in reverse that's the little bump cap so this is for the seven or eight dollars I paid for this reel with a little bit of lubrication a little bit of knowledge and then the last uh, piece here I did this ahead of time I had a uh, parts reel I probably paid a dollar or two for it's a Sigma it's a Shakespeare Sigma I know that Shakespeare's share uh, the same manufacturer as Fluger does. It's part of the same company. So I grabbed uh, grabbed this cap off of here on the Shakespeare. We're just going to see if it fits on this one. If it does, then uh, I really got lucky. Okay, so there you go. So if you have a Fluger try-on, which again, it's a probably new, it's about a $40 reel. We saw that there's seven ball bearings. We so that there's one on each side of the shaft here and there's one up top here and the empty reverse makes four and the spool makes five there's a ball bearing under this beautiful rosewood handle here that makes six and i suspect that's the other one right here on the line roller guide would have the uh the other ball bearing in it so uh for the 15 minutes or so that we did this a 40 dollar reel that was purchased at a garage sale for about seven or eight dollars uh, is ready to go fishing and uh other than the cosmetics behind it where it shows its wear, uh, this reel will fight the fish as good as if it was new. So uh, I hope that uh, this has been valuable to you. I hope it's encouraged you to, uh, to go find some reels that uh, are sound mechanically but may, but may be in need of some service and, uh, and go uh, do some work on it and uh, put them back into use. So let me just show you two other things. I showed you the Fluger Capital before. I just want to show you two examples of the early Fluger spinning wheels. So Fluger came uh, to making the spinning wheel in the 1950s, I think 54 or so, almost as old as I am. And uh, this is an early example of a Fluger. Fluger was a manufacturing company in Akron, Ohio. This is a Fluger 1050. I can't say for certain what the date is, but I can tell you when I went to buy this reel, I actually thought it was a, a damn quick reel. Uh, because of this mechanism here for the reversing. When I didn't see the markings on it, I went up to the cap and, and found that as a Fluger. So this would be one of the 50s or early 60s. And then in the 70s and the 80s, they uh, they followed everybody else. This one was made in Japan. And this one, uh, so this probably 70s or 80s, probably up there with the Daiwas and the uh, Ryobis and uh, the like at the time. A uh, nice solid metal case, which was the technology at the time. Single ball bearing on the side, probably competed with the Pen uh, 105C as a silver series there. So uh, good company, uh, part of a bigger empire now. Nice reel, uh, attractively priced around $40. Uh, found used much less, easy to, uh, to work on as I showed you, and something that should last uh, several seasons more if you take care of them. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, please uh, indicate a like on YouTube. If you'd like to see more of these, uh, please subscribe to my channel. Again, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for viewing the video.